sin an in or a complicated duo in murder drones, you can't really find a unanimous agreement amongst the majority of the community for him. The closest that you can get is brother and sister, but it really only applies to episode 5, Home, where we have Sin directly call in Big Brother and Stab. You seem upset, Big Brother N. Perhaps you'd like to attend the gala with me. Light sip. Let's take things back a bit to a start and peer through Sin's eyes at the situation, or rather, Solver's eyes. I do need to infer a lot of this stuff, by the way, due to the screen time in episode 5 and the flashbacks. Keep that in mind. Here we go. Sin is overtaken by the Absolute Solver. Absolute Solver is fished out of the trash by Tessa and is introduced to NVJ. Jay wouldn't likely not care and begrudgingly live with it, but she calls out Sin in episode 2's flashbacks, calling it her another one, and clearly not enjoying her. They would likely be shy and not interact much to Sin, kind of separating a relationship there, kind of like with Tessa. While in initially if it's scared in episode 2's flashback, would likely go up and be the first to greet Sin and befriend them and learn the move impairment and whatnot and their uh, issues. Essentially, autism and whatever syndrome you can apply to a robot has movement disabilities. Tessa was also likely warmed up to Sin at first before turning uncomfortable by their presence. Sin having issues holding up a personality of her own accord likely had already chose Tessa to start imitating, referenced by their same hairstyle and bow. Tessa, I believe, is more like an angelic figure to the drones. Though there's not a lot of parallels, I don't want to call her like a god to the drones or anything, but she's the only human in the manor who doesn't hate them and actually cares for them. She salvages them and keeps them as pets in a way, yet treats them like people. Tessa clearly had a favorite in episode 5. A lot of people thought that it would be Jay, but it made her go from vibing to enthusiastic like an actual child, spinning him around like he was a toy. We can assume it's not the first time this has happened with her care towards the drones, especially with how she talks to Jay compared to him about them not letting Sin out of the basement. And actually, yes, that's what he muffled. He muffled, uh, let's see, you guys aren't letting her out? Alright, anyways, Tessa seems nearly reluctant to tell him. This could also just be because In's the only one unaware of it. We also don't know about V though, since she's in her 606 day in the library. Next I think why she's not too thrilled by Sin is by her overall shining level of atmosphere. She's damaged, speaks monotone, and has been copying Tessa down to her look, behaviors, pretty much everything. Slowly seeming like it's going to kill her and take her place. I do think the bond formed with Sin and did impact it further down the line, as it was the Solver's first time probably getting loved and appreciated with affection and whatnot, causing it to grow closer to end since, well, ends in. Evident of how they walked, asked Tessa about the gala, Sin clings to end, holding his arm and trying to stay behind her. Overall, for this segment, I believe Sin formed an emotional connection through In that she did not want to let go of, which would further come back down the line. Fast forwarding to the Gala Massacre, the events of Episode 5 in the real world finish when they met Sin and Tessa, when they met uh, Tessa and Jay. Tessa was an odd case at first, but over some thought and thinking of the bond Sin had, I do think it made sense. Sin knew In wouldn't trust it, wouldn't trust like Sin as a person anymore. So it used Tessa's corpse and wore a spacesuit, modifying its voice, using all the mimicking it did on Tessa and cosplay as her, grinning in cheerfully. It was the only way it could have that bond in love with him while completing its goal, or any positive relationship that it could enjoy while it's carried out its own deeds. And if it all went well, it might have actually tried to take in, in the landing pod and go out in space after the planet was blown up. But there is something I do want to point out. The line Tessa said that, does not, that may or may not suggest the depths of Sin's own feelings or speculation on what it believes. 
Tessa would do here. T Tessa? So yeah, that happened. I do think Sin and as Tessa calling in handsome was actually probably genuine on their part. A long sign later in the lab's entrance when they leap into the hole, while being carried, she sort of bats in hair a little bit, like trying to show a mix between her own and Tessa's affection. Side note, I do find it funny how in Binu's dissection, Tessa seems exhausted with it helping him. And also the fact that they just taped the magnet to her helmet. That's just funny to me. Doing great, dude. And who's side? Tried something there? Do you want to take a gander at Earth scene? Where Tessa explains how they might have to kill Uzi before Solbert takes her over. There's a moment where Tessa speaks with concern, puts her hands on ends, tells him the situation, and tries to ease him into the way of killing Uzi. Fast forward to the hallway scene, Tessa gives a funny comment on Ann holding on Ann and Uzi holding hands, but I don't think she fully believed they were dating. Because in her mind at this point was she had to destroy the other hosts. Episode 7 opens up with Tessa having to stop Anne from overworking Uzi so that she doesn't get corrupted. Soon after, Tessa makes a smug threat to Uzi, where Anne shuts her down sternly. Something I think the Solver didn't expect. Tessa Disguise wasn't working as well as thought, and after the cave collapses due to a null, Anne is left pinned for trying to solve his own arm while Sin tries to do another trick while becoming a more mission driven set of actions. He decided to spill some information, figuring this would be the last time it would see this version of Din. Using a hologram body and made to be like a puppet, it slowly neared in, pointing out that Inn was the reason it wanted the squad to retain their personalities, and that they were special. It was the only one that always seemed to surprise him. I think this moment was like the downfall of his plan to act as Tessa. Once there was a pushback, it went right ahead and tried to pull out the weed from the roots, Riot scene and the hug scene where Sin tried to corrupt In, giving himself by Uzi's administration. After giving In a thank you, he tried to drag him into Singularity to consume him before Nori stopped the horrible fate, saving him. Fast forward to the moment that set everyone off in episode 7 Tessa's death and the corpse survival. Tessa gets held at Blade Point just before killing Uzi and In, questions her about the patch, giving her one chance. And right before Tessa turned around, Keep your hand up. And just like that, she's killed. I think this was both an important moment for Sin and In in their goals, and as characters. In killing Tessa cuts him off in the past and puts Uzi as his future. While for Sin, Tell is a huge revelation. Tessa isn't In's most loved person anymore. But there's someone else he loves more than Tessa. I do think it didn't piece together it was fully Uzi until later. Likely the sacrifice gave Sin that realization, and so the entire inverse and order of fight was actually genuinely trying to kill the two, especially with it being angry about Nori's survival. But I do think it did to the extent that In cared about Uzi during that fight. Not that it had full not, not, not that it had the full picture or anything, which is why it used Uzi's defenseless body as a sort of taunt knowing In would intervene to save it. In a final fight that gives up the zombie has a bit, I think it hadn't fully pieced together, still planned on eating them, yet I think the sacrifice sealed away that it knew Uzi was who In loved the most. Which was very interesting to see how it affected them, especially with the plan it had. So I know Zombie Tesla was such an amazing design. You don't see corpses like that anymore. 
and I love how Murder Drones wasn't afraid to get muddy in the water with it. Episode 8, Absolute End. The last episode in the series. The slightly tarnished chunk of gold of the franchise, I believe. It was a great episode, yes, but the pacing and time kind of killed it for me. Also, I wasn't a fan of the ending, like not a full-on fan. I even made a few rewrite ideas for fun, like Khan actually participating in the final fight instead of V, trying to bring his arc force full circle. Anyways, I this is the episode I believe clicked for Sin, and that it was Uzi. And since Uzi was a host, it could enact a pretty elaborate plan, which I think it did for the big finale. The first bit I want to point out real quick is that there's a few frames in the known Uzi's hand where it does glitch yellow, which is normally meaning Sin's influence. But that was a neat detail. So it could be that Sin is actually playing along with this and trying to rig its own death. Anyways, in the first reveal of Sin during the final episode, we have a bit of mockery before it does two things. It goes monotone when greeting Uzi, but it spikes an obsessive amount of enthusiasm when greeting him. Even waving, you cannot tell me it does not have a thing for in at this point. Hello, Uzi. Hi, N. That makes it clear that it is a primary focus on my mind for it. But that basically says that he's the end goal. I believe now that the phrase is better to assimilate than explain, it's a whole new meaning. So like what another theory has said, I can't remember since I'm in school writing scripts, so maybe it means assimilate isn't assimilate with Uzi. I'm holding on to the theory of this being that Solver wants in for that bond it shared, and to have Big Brother end back. Maybe all the clones didn't reciprocate the way it wanted, and now that Uzi had the groundwork laid out for it, it can merge with her and sort of get what it wanted. I also do think that every chase sequence involving Uzi, it does do the callback thing to Uzi and not in. And this is the most important to it, but it wants Uzi so it can be with in forever, choosing the perfect host in was already close to. I want to mention a moment that solidifies Sin as a still deep caring character for in because we can see at times where Solver is both faking drastic time slow movements like those epic anime scenes. And there's the actual slow ones. Anyways, the moment where Sid has In's corners clutches slowly moving it to the mouth with a maniacal lapis V watched in horror, it, it's clearly slow on purpose, like it's normal time speed. As if the solver's hesitating. What gets eyes in the scene? Normally eyes close like that when they're associated with an insanity or taking pleasure, that's not what I think it's doing. It wasn't looking at V. I think it was because of the curve that Sin looks hesitant. Like a curve in the eyelids that makes Sin look hesitant. I'm willing to do it. So it's stalling out as long as possible for event for intervention. It doesn't want in dead. Clearly what We'll skip a lot of the final fight because all there is to pry for of Sin in is that puppy dog eye scene, so we'll skip to what I believe the solver's crescendo for the plan. We have that scene where Sin is reaching for Uzi and does that teleport, where it where it teleports into him, into her hand. I'm pretty sure that teleport was slower in real time, hence how Uzi reacted in time to grab Sin's core while well, it was basically scanning around trying to match up with Sin's own teleports during the fight. When Sin dies, we see this weird monochrome world, like horribly deafened, it looks like someone turned the contrast all the way up. It's only illuminated by her essence core thingy. It grabs Uzi's arm, slowly pulling it down to its mouth. It feels unnecessarily long for it to want to having its body back, which is partially why I think it's staged. Maybe it couldn't assimilate Uzi, but it knew if Uzi assimilated it instead, it would have some control in her body. And we see that in the end. Uzi takes on some traits of Sin, such as the weird arm pose, bapping D's gun away, and the yellow blended eyes. The red middle is likely dull, her uh, HUD even shows up in the end for a moment too. I think the solver knew what getting its core eaten by Uzi would do, and has some control over her body while Doll is completely suppressed to an eye glow. 
Now I think here's a part that kind of pulls strings together on the ending piece. In the credit scene. In the end of the credit scene, Uzi opens a locker, looks into the mirror to see her body glitch to reveal Sin's appendages. The camera's having yellow eye glows, like she's a hologram. Yellow lights, not purple. And Sin suppresses herself to the tail, getting free range control over it to offer to offer a bow to Uzi. In my opinion, I think it's a pretty interesting ending, because it leaves speculation to who's really in control. Is it Sin, whose cameras make up Uzi's body and basically project her as a person? Or is Uzi the vessel with a yellow monster? My closing thoughts are that in the beginning, Sin and In had a close relationship that can lean both sibling and something to Uzi and In's mo with more time. But mostly gleaning more wholesome relationship as big brother and little sister Sin. This tree worked a drone in a manner with her supportive big caring brother and his doing his best to make up time to keep her included. With episodes 6 and 7 wanting more action before the grand finale, Masquerade as Tessa to feel more closeness to end. Once again before saying goodbye, only ruining your skies in the process, and finally episode 8. Sin's more obsessive side cracking open and wanting to be within forever, in the most mutual way possible. Realizing that no matter what could do, he wouldn't love her unless it became the one he loved. Bending his plan and foiling his chances to kill and intentionally to pursue Uzi and merge. Ultimately having to fall to his knees and trick Uzi into assimilating her to live within throughout her life. As a voice inside her head subtly influenced her mind and slowly started to take over her life. And even make her doubt her own control each glitch that reveals a camera and appearance of a tail. Showing even Merce Uzi, it still has control over some aspects of her body. Hope you guys liked my theory. I spent a lot of time on it. By that, I mean I spent a day on it <laughs> at like one night. And I think as a final closing note, Cynic Sin as a ship is... Eh, it depends. It depends which way you take it. Since I'm looking at all sides, it's a ladder for me. I just don't really care if people ship or not. Technically, it's plausible, but far less likely to actually occur. In the uh, canon, yeah, it's not going to happen. But if if the events of the show, like the massacre, never happened, I can see it. But I do think it would stay the adorable sibling relationship more, more than uh, not. In the words of Postra, to finish this video off and the inspiration for this entire video format, I made it. I hope to see you whenever my next project ends up being.